What's up guys? So today we are going to be reviewing this 2021 Mazda 3 Turbo. This is actually my dealership loaner because my car is getting some stuff done to it right now. And this car is actually, I think this might be a lemon. So we're going to show you all the issues with it, but we're also going to review it and show you why I love this car. So let's get into it. Now, looking at the design of the Mazda 3 Turbo, I honestly think this is one of the best looking hatchbacks on the road, especially in this crystal soul red metallic paint. I also really like the shape of this vehicle. I remember when this car first came out, people were saying the shape was really ugly, but honestly, I always thought it looked really good. Now, since it's the turbo model, you get a few little details that let you know it's a turbo model, like this more aggressive front splitter with a line that goes down the middle. Honestly, I like how they didn't do too much and add like some ugly big fake vents like some other manufacturers would. You also get a line that goes down the back of the spoiler, these gloss black wheels that let you know it's a turbo model, and then you also get gloss back mirror caps and that's available on the sedan also. Now you also get a bunch of little badges all over the car like the all wheel drive badge, you get a turbo badge, and then you get a Skyactiv G badge. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that's too many badges? I feel like they could do away without the all wheel drive badge or the Skyactiv G badge. But they really want to brag to you about what this car has. Because honestly, Mazda 3 hasn't really had all-wheel drive before, so they really want to reel those customers in away from Subaru. Now, what do you guys think of the taillights? I really like how they have the four little dots that blink in the taillights. I think they're some of the best looking taillights I've seen. Now, if you see here, one interesting feature is you have a lock button on the tailgate. I don't know if that's specific to the turbo models, since this is a higher end model, this has all the options. But in my 2020 Mazda 3 review, it didn't have this lock button. So when you press it, you can see it locks, but I have the cam on me, so it didn't lock. Now, lifting up the floor right here, you got a spare tire with the Bose subwoofer. But unfortunately, you can't actually take this off and put it underneath here like you can in a Golf. You can take this off, however, just like that, but you're gonna have to put it in like your garage or something. So this is Mazda's key fob. It's like the detonator key. You got the buttons on the side. Um, it's a light flimsy key. And here's how you get inside. You have the touch sensitive buttons on the door handle. I like how they don't have that black button that they have on most of the older models. And you can see they also hid away the keyhole. If your key dies, I don't even know where it is because it's not underneath it anywhere. So I don't know what you would do if your key dies, but unlock it and let's get inside. Now, sitting in the car, you got an eight-way power driver's seat with two-way power lumbar and a little spider on my arm. Um, and you get seat memory right here. I don't know why they didn't just make it three-position memory because you can see they have a little button for it there. But you can also see you got the buttons for the 360-degree camera. This is for your driver assistance. This is for your parking sensors. That's for your traction control. And then you got auto high beams right there. Now, looking at the door panel, this is where Mazda really disguises itself as a luxury brand because you got leather that goes all the way right here with that stitching, and it's really soft. Then you got leather here, leather that's extended all the way here with the metal speaker cover for the Bose 12 speaker sound system, which sounds really good. It has tons of bass. Um, my only complaint with it is when you turn up the volume a lot and make it really loud, it sounds a tiny bit distorted, but this is more of a cheaper car, so I'll let that slide. You also get, it's a little bit soft up here. I like this line that goes down now. Honestly, they really made this car feel really artsy in a way. I really like all the lines and curves that this dash has and all the different elevations. And then I really like how this is covered in some leather with some orange stitching. And then honestly, I feel like everything is just so driver centric with the air vents right here that angle towards you. And then this is just in your perfect positioning when you're driving. Now here's the center console. I like how this is lined in leather too. Um, my gripe is this is all gloss black and at 6,000 miles, this does not look that good. It looks really dirty. It's scratched up. That's why my Mazda, I have this little cover that you could put over this. It's like a carbon fiber look. You get that. You got the sport mode button right here. Listen to the nice button clicks with all the buttons in the car. That's one thing I noticed with the three is they really made the button clicks sound so good that my Mazda 6 and 6 5s, they don't have those satisfying button clicks. Even on the steering wheel, listen to me pressing the steering wheel buttons. They're just so satisfying to press. Same with the lights. All LED lighting and it's so satisfying to press. Looking back at the center console, you get two cup holders right here. I'm not really a fan of this spot for the cup holders. It kind of is hard 
to like grab it and then if you have a really big cup it'll like hit these things which is fine but it's just kind of irritating especially if the straw touches that that's kind of unsanitary but at least you get a little usb port right there you get a little bit of storage right here and then this slides forward and back it's a this is a huge armrest for a little hatchback this is a huge armrest and i like that now let's open this up see it's a little bit finicky sometimes i don't know why i this isn't the first time i've opened this i don't know why i'm not able to open this right now i wasn't able to open it either i don't know if this is a build quality issue if we're just dumb but it's not it's actually like not opening and it just has one latch let's open it up okay so I guess you have to move it back a little bit to open it. Um, but you get this little parcel divider in case you want to divide something. And then you get a U another USB port in here, that 12 volt. And this is not deep at all, but where it makes up in depth is length. So you get a decent amount of storage in here, honestly. Of course you get a dual zone automatic climate control um, and heated seats and heated steering wheel. But what you don't get is cooled seats, honestly, that's one thing that would kind of stop me from getting this car. They just, Mazda, you just need to add cooled seats. Literally, they got rid of the Mazda 6 sedan, so now the only way to get a Mazda with cooled seats is if you get an SUV. So honestly, I think they just need to, in one of the next refreshes, they need to add cooled seats to this. The seats are already perforated, and this is another thing with the seats, is there's little orange lining in them. And if you look in the sun, it actually looks kind of cool. You see all the orange and the perforations, and it kind of gives it almost a two-tone look. Not really, but you can see it a little bit. Opening up the glove box, look at that. They give you a metal glove box handle and it falls slowly. It's not lined in any felt material, but this is a cheaper car. And honestly, this is a pretty big glove box, actually. I was expecting it to be a little bit smaller. And, oh look, you got some wheel locks. That's kind of cool. Here's your standard 11 inch Mazda infotainment display. Honestly, I really like kind of how this is very minimalistic and it kind of looks elegant. Um, go over to settings. There's not much configurability you can do with it. It's just like the average settings. It's kind of easy to use. I think their older system's a little bit easier to use for me, but this one's still pretty good. It's not as bad as some other systems I've tested, but it's not like the best system. One thing though, that this car has an issue with, it has traffic sign recognition system. I've never seen a traffic sign light up anywhere in the heads up display or in the gauge cluster. It doesn't work. I don't know why. Literally, somewhere, I literally made sure the traffic sign recognition system is on, and it is, and it never works. So that's another issue this car has. Moving on to the center display right there. If you press the info button, you could scroll through each little menu it shows you. This is the only, it only shows you three menus. So you get this one, this one, and this one. And it doesn't do anything when you put it in sport mode. It just so, says that little sport thing. So it doesn't actually change anything. That's one thing I wish Mazda would do is that they're doing on the new CX-50 is where the gauge display, it changes colors when you put it in different modes. I think they need to do that on the three whenever they refresh this. Sitting behind myself, honestly, this has a decent amount of leg room. I mean, it's not good. A Volkswagen Golf has more leg room, but if you can sit in the back of a Ford Focus, you can sit in the back of this. The only thing is the headroom kind of suffers a little bit, but I'm 6'3 and I'm fine back here. Like, if you can't sit back here, then you really just like need to compromise. Also get the same luxury in the back front as you do in the back. Leather, leather again. This is soft too, but unfortunately they don't give you the metal speaker covers like they do in the front. It's a cheaper car, so it's fine. And then you get tons of storage in here for cup holders or whatever else you need. Here's another issue this car has. This door doesn't work. Oh, you just have the child lock on. You need to turn the child lock off. Okay. Still doesn't work. No, you just got to do it the other way. Still doesn't work. This door doesn't work. Literally. I can't get out. Here's some things I noticed. Is there's no amenities back here. As luxury as Mazda wants to seem. They don't give you any rear air vents, so if you're hot back here, you're suffering. You don't even get any USB ports. Two USB ports in this car. That's, like, fine. I mean, I feel like a lot of cars in this class only give you one USB port. But it'd be nice if they gave you some USB ports in the rear. And no heated rear seats. That's another thing. The Honda Civic used to have heated rear seats. I don't know why they removed it for the new Honda Civic. And I think the Kia Forte has heated rear seats, too. So plenty of cars in this class have heated rear seats and cooled front seats. 
Mazda needs to really add those features, especially the cool front seats. Looking under the hood, this is the 2.5 liter turbo. 250 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque on premium. So you have to put 91 in this if you want the 250 horsepower. I really like how they give you the turbo in red. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, this gets 23 in the city and 31 on the highway, which isn't good. And it also goes out through She's a six-speed automatic. No manual transmission is available. One thing that's interesting about this, the base engine is this, in this car is a 2 liter that makes 155 horsepower. And then this is the 2.5 liter turbo, so they really upgraded in size. And one thing that's really nice about Mazda turbos is you actually get to use the cheaper oil versus the more expensive oil when you get an oil change. So if you have a naturally aspirated Mazda, you have to pay more for oil change than the turbo model. Let's start the car. Oh. Now, Mazda gives you all the driver assistance standards, so radar, cruise control, forward collision, lane departure, and lane keeping, as you guys know what they are. Um, they also give you blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert if you go one up from the base model, so this includes that. And it has a triangle in the blind spot monitoring instead of a little symbol, so that's a new thing that Mazda's doing. This car also has front and rear parking sensors and 360 degree camera, which that isn't really that common in hatchbacks. But it also has rear automatic braking and rear cross traffic braking. So if you're backing up and you're about to like back up into a trash can, this thing will automatically stop for you. One, bro, why aren't the parking sensors? Okay, see the parking sensors? One issue I have with them, I like the sound they make, but if you have the music turned up high, you won't hear the parking sensors. I was pulling into a parking spot at school and in my Mazda 6, I'll have the music up high and you'll hear the parking sensors because they have a different tone. But with this new audible tone that Mazda uses, you can't really hear it when you have the music up. And you don't even have to have it that loud to where you don't even realize the parking sensors are going off. I think that's the issue because it's almost, it's almost like it's useless because if you're always blasting music, which you should be with this Bose 12 speaker sound system, then you're not gonna hear it when you're parking. 150 horsepower, 320 foot, foot pounds of torque. Let's put it in sport mode. Launch it. Wow, that has a really and this is on 91. I put it I put 91 in it. That has a really hard launch and this thing puts you in the back of the seat for like a second or so. Um, but I think Mods is kind of limiting the power or the boost or something because I noticed when you it goes, it doesn't go as, it doesn't like pull as hard as my Mazda 6 does. Maybe it's because this is all wheel drive versus front wheel drive. But I know Mazda turbo engines, after you have to have to put a decent amount of miles on them and put 91 in them before it really starts performing like it should. So maybe it's because this is a rental car and people always be putting 87 in it and it only has 7,000 miles. It might not be unlocked to its full potential, but I think it was either at 5,000 miles 10,000 miles or 15,000 miles is when the, it truly starts getting broken in. This is Mazda's really old six-speed automatic transmission. Bulletproof, reliable, but that is where this car suffers the most. I mean, I really like how smooth shifting it is, and for everyday use, it's a perfect transmission. But for performance driving, you know, so many competitors offer better transmission, like a Volkswagen DSG is way better although it's way more unreliable are you recording yeah now this is where the transmission kind of lags when you start going fast you can feel it kind of pause a little bit to shift like it can't really handle the power i wasn't flooring it there it does really good with 75 percent throttle but if you're like flooring it it almost like pauses a little bit when it shifts and that's something that a dual clutch wouldn't do now, 70 miles per hour, honestly, I feel like this doesn't really have much road noise. This feels really good. The ride quality is really smooth until you hit any little bump and you really can feel it. That's where this car suffers. It has a torsion beam suspension in the rear and you can really feel that in the ride quality. You can also feel it a little bit with the handling. I'll show you when we get on the curvy road up here. But when you're handling um, the Golf, I used to have a Mark 7 Golf and it didn't really lean like it just went through the turns this really goes through the turns but you can feel it lean a little bit i don't know i don't know i'm not really a fan of that i like the sound the engine 
makes sense pretty good. And this this pool is super healthy. This will get you into trouble a little bit. I feel like this is the tr threshold where things, when you're flooring it, where it starts getting a little bit scary. You know, there's a threshold between, oh my god, this is really fun, and then there's the type of acceleration where you're like, okay, I need to like be careful, I need to be safe. And I think this is the threshold where it starts crossing over into the little bit where it starts getting a little bit scary. But that's a good thing, I like that. We like when that when it puts you back in the seat. It downshifts pretty good and it, once it puts you in the power band, this thing pulls. What I really like about this car is you don't, have, you barely have to press the gas at all when you're at highway speeds to like pass through traffic. You know, if you're somebody who likes lane changes a lot and passes a lot of cars on the highway, you're not gonna have to be revving this past three to do that. You barely press the gas and it really changes lanes and it goes effortlessly. And you're not gonna waste gas doing this because 23 MPG in the city, 30, 31 on the highway. Yeah, no, this runs through gas so quickly, especially if you have the AC on and it's so fun to drive. You wanna press your foot down. You wanna get bad gas mileage. I do like the mirror. You get the frameless mirror. It looks good. You get an auto dimming driver side mirror. And we're on the curvy roads now, so let's show you guys how it handles. Yep, we got to drive the Mazda 3 on a road like this. This it's meant for roads like this. Look at I'm doing 70 around this turn, and it feels like I could do 85. Wow. I'm not going to because I'm like I don't want to. But this car is so confident, and it's I'm, I'm turning on the AC. It just loves going on a curvy road. I'm really excited to drive it on this road because it's such a fun road to drive, and this is such a fun car to drive. No. Wow. I took that turn a little bit too fast because I wanted to see if I like overcorrected how it would be, and this thing just gripped. The all-wheel drive really helps it grip. This is actually really surprising me right now. Like, I'm just, I'm not even trying. Like, I could push it a lot harder, but I'm not. I'm just going through this effortlessly. I'm taking these cur curves effortlessly, and I'm taking them fast. I love this car. Honestly, I kind of want to trade in my Mazda 6 and get one, because my Mazda 6 has had so many issues, but the only reason I don't want to is because this doesn't have the cooled seats. And then the build quality. This honestly doesn't feel as solidly built as like something like a Mazda 6 or a CX-5. Random shot of the exterior of the car, but I forgot to mention the other main issue I had with this car was almost every single time I would drive and I'd be done driving, I'd turn the car off and it would say the battery was about to die. I have never seen a car do that. I don't know when a car thinks the battery is going to die after driving. Now, the other issue I ran into was the two-touch sensor on the door handle was not working. Mazda's, you just touch the sensor twice and it'll unlock all the doors. This car, it literally never worked. And I even had the um, setting turned on the infotainment system, so it wasn't like it wasn't turned the other issue was sometimes didn't even recognize the key. I would literally have it in my pocket and I'd walk right up to the door and it wouldn't even unlock it. The thing I noticed is this headliner, not to be nitpicky, but this feels like styrofoam to me. It feels really cheap and it won't hold up well. Like, it's not like they need to put like suede Alcantara on the headliner, but I've been in like some Ford products that have better fit than headliners. So this is, there's some places where you can notice Moz is kind of cutting costs. Same with the gauge cluster right here. I've read the forums and so many people have said they have problems that the gauge cluster gets really scratched up if they like wipe it. So you need to be careful with that. Be careful with what you clean the gauge cluster with because it'll get all scratched up it, and it's not going to go away. People say they can't get the scratches away. Let's take this turn a little bit fast. Let's see how it handles. Just, this thing's just confident, 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 confident. That's what I like about Mazda vehicles. As they just love to be taken on the back roads where other cars just kind of struggle. They slow down, slow down. Mazda's like, nope, speed up, speed up. The driver assistance also works pretty well. Mazda's radar cruise control. I don't really have any complaints with any of that. How comfy are the seats? Honestly, these seats, they're pretty hard, but they're comfy for me. I actually work. I have to deliver packages of this thing and I was in this thing for like six, seven hours straight getting in and out of it. Uh, I'm still comfy driving it, so, but I'm really skinny. So I think if you're a wider frame person, you might be a little bit uncomfortable in here. But for, if you're skinny, you'll probably be comfortable. I just wish it was a little bit softer. Um, it has some nice padding when you're going around the corners. These seats hold you in place really well, but it just needs to be a little bit softer in my opinion. 
but overall, how much did this, does this car cost? This has a MSRP of around $36,000, and it has all these issues. Honestly, if you're getting one of these certified pre-owner used, make sure this has a warranty, because I kind of feel like these might be a Mercedes with the electronics, because this one's not, the traffic sign recognition system isn't working, the door, the rear door doesn't work, and then the heads-up display shakes a lot. This kind of feels a little bit cheaply made. Overall though, I think this is a really fun hatchback to drive and it's definitely worth the money if it's not having bad build quality issues like this one. I think it's worth the money. I would get this probably over Mark 8 Golf just because of that Golf's infotainment display with all the touch sensitive controls. Well, that wraps up the 2022 Mazda 3 Turbo Review. Thank y'all for watching and subscribe for more content.